spicy brain, so I find it hard to memorise my poetry, but I will make it up to you in the second round with some dodgy improv. So with that, um, so this is about the complexities of toxic family life. I don't enjoy receiving the texts. The daydreaming, anticlimactic effects, expectations, reading between the lines, the finely printed subtexts and derivation, that I must be some sort of complex, time-stamped, triple-ticked witch with an intricate naivety. Their disrespect dripped between my sanity and the logistics of their altered states of reality. The fragility of their ego sinks lower than my ability to forgive, to forget. I shouldn't confess because in some ways I'm insulting myself, but I was taught that I always deserve less than what I get. I should be lucky, grateful, a fraught, paradoxical mess because there is no less than non-existent promises. Concepts that I am a deceiver, evil, an underachiever at pulling the wool over their eyes despite being the black sheep of the family. Consumed by oversimplified lies, I'm guilty as charged within four small voice notes. One minute, 52 seconds total, accusations, crushed hopes, as morale goes up in clouds of smoke filled dependence and with it the tar, the nicotine, the ultimate antihistamine to my itching consciousness, the warped Freudian dreams, a stream of gatekeeping and cryptic evasiveness. I mean, what does this even mean to the rationale when rationalising abuse in its simplicity and the interrelevant extreme? Last seen at 23.59, but I've been awake since 4.15. The message changes tonality and nothing is as it seems, but it's same old, same old for me as it is for you. I mean, let's keep it simple, old school. One plus one is two and three is a crowd, but you already knew that. It doesn't take Einstein to see that I'm no MC, squared by the simplicities of life, and that is fine. Because we live as we die, and I'm just a poet who doesn't mathematically know what family life should be like. And you bloody well know it. Thank you. Woo!